Hey everybody, Ron here from Fallout Hobbies. As always, Jules is here. Hey guys. Been working on Bellacore a little bit more. Today I'm going to do some OSL lighting on his sword. And uh, been picking colors out for that. Some nice blues and greens. We're going to do some cool green fire glowing things on this sword. That's always fun. I hope everyone out there is having a good day today. Is everyone gearing up for uh, Memorial Day shenanigans? Oops, sorry, kicked a switch out. All right. Let's see, this guy is really coming together. All right, so one of the tricks with OSL lighting is planning things out in advance. Um, the thing that I'm lighting up the most, I'm not done painting like certain sections of Bellacore. Really, ideally, you should be done painting everything before you start doing OSL. I just haven't gotten the time to finish doing that. The sword is going to be glowing like a bluish green and it's going to reflect a little bit on the rocks here it's going to reflect a little bit on the edges of the legs here and it's going to reflect kind of on the very bottom tips of the wings here if i can get those areas nice and lit up then it'll be a pretty effective paint job Debating on whether, no, I'm not going to attach the wings yet because I'm not going to be able to paint the other side of the sword well if I do. Okay. So, first things first. Yeah, we were just debating before we went on camera, you know, whether uh, Bellacore would actually be able to, like, fly. I don't think you'll be able to fly. With all those chains, it's just not very aerodynamic. No. No, I don't think he's capable of flying. All right, so one of the things with the OSL lighting that I see a lot of people uh, not necessarily get right is the fact that you got to have three layers of color. You have to have a shadow. You have to have the midtone, which would be kind of like the main color that you're trying to achieve. And then you have to have some highlights. And the highlights need to be very close to white in order to really simulate heat or energy or what have you. What I'm working on right now is mixing up three base colors here. This needs some brightness still. Definitely some more going for us. Shadow color. Well, sort of a shadow color. The main color. I really like this cockpit emerald green, but it needs to be a bit more saturated, which is why I'm mixing some fluorescent green into it and a little bit of white. And as always, using a very handy uh, condiment cups. Condiment cups. 
always use it. Cass Caswell is uh, checking in with us, says, hey, Ron and Jules. Hey, Cass. What's up? We are just getting ready for our very first vegan Memorial Day. <laughs> mm. Should be fun. That's too much white. Richard Rails uh, checking in with us says, "What's up?" Hey, Rich. How's it going? All right, I'm mixing up three. Cass Castle says, "Been busy setting up my paint desk." Nice. nice. All right, so as you can see, I got three colors set up here. They're very vivid colors, and I'm going to be using. Um, my new SOTAR set on the fine detail setting, and I'm going to be doing some light shadowing. The first thing I'm going to be doing is any area that's going to get, you got to remember this blade's going to be like bright hot looking, like it's like a glowing ethereal energy blade. So the base color is going to be this, and then this same color is going to be reflected a little bit on the edge of the rocks and a little bit on the inside of the wing and a little bit on the edge of the leg, and I might even spray a little bit up to the underside of the face here. Then it's going to be brought up a bit, where I'm going to be spraying at the second color, and then doing a little bit of the highlighting and whatnot all over the area. The final color is going to be this brightest color, and that's going to be on the blade only. That way it looks like the blade is super bright and everything that's coming off of it is like a lesser version of the color, like a, like a darker, more dull version of the color. I want the blade to be super bright. And then at the very, very end, after everything's dry, I'm going to take this same color and probably mix it with like just a little bit of yellow, like a hair bit of yellow, and then use that to dry brush over the flames. And that should really make it look like it's bright. Cass says uh, those wings look really, really sick. Thanks, man. And uh, Chris Wagner says where I live, those first two cups would have dried already. Uh, <laughs> and yeah. Rich says, uh, watching this to see if he can try it for the Gem Hadar bug engines? Gem Hadar. Oh, sorry, I can't Gem Hadar. It. They're from Deep Space Nine. Uh, gotcha. I um, actually, yeah, Rich, you can do that for the Gem Hadar bug engines. Babe, can you find the OSL tutorial that is on my Eye of Error blog? Yeah. If you go to the Eye of Error blog, there was a tab for tutorials. Mm -hmm. And then I had a OSL tutorial in there for Dark Eldar weapons, but it was purple. So, Rich, you could actually kind of use that as a bit of a reference for how to do purple glowing effects because that's the color of the Jempadar bug engines. Hmm. All right, let's get this airbrush fired up. You can do like object source lighting effects on just about anything though, correct? Yes. Yeah, that's what I thought. You see it all the time. People do it a lot now. Back when I did that tutorial, it wasn't as popular yet. But the problem is, like, a lot of people tend to really only do it in, like, two steps. Or sometimes even just one step. Sometimes they just go for this color and just spray this color and say, hey, it's glowing. But that doesn't look realistic or believable. And what you really want to do is go through all the gradations and all the highlights. A good OSL effect should be, like, five colors. It shouldn't just be, like, one or two. Cass Caswell's asking, like, what would you recommend for, like, an intermediate airbrush? Well, like, um, I mean, like, I like using the Sotars. They're about a hundred bucks. Badger makes them. Um, they're pretty good, uh, for detail, but they also can get, you know, bulk spraying done. They're a lot better than, say, like, a Master or something like that. Those are crap. 
Gilbert Mondragon is checking in with us. Says good afternoon, Ron and Jules. Hey, Gil. Those things really did turn out amusing. See, I'm just spraying just the edge here because where the sword is, it'll only kind of, you know, glow in that area right there. Cass says he has an Expo AB650. I don't know what that even is. No air coming out. What's going on here? Hold on a second, guys. I gotta make sure that not clogged. No, I got a um I got a uh what what you call it? Um I might switch to the other airbrush. Give me just a second here. Cass says it's a very basic airbrush and compressor. There's also Iwata, too. Mm -hmm. Iwatas are pretty nice. I was getting good spray for a second. What happened here? Uh, Gil is recommending, he says a good intermediate airbrush would be a Badger Patriot 105 or an Iwata Revolution. Yeah, Patriots are pretty good. There we go. Sorry guys, technical difficulties, the airbrush decided to clog up on me. Cass says, cheers, Gilbert. Gil, don't you have a uh, website where you recommend for airbrushes where you get like a discount on? I can't remember, but I, I seem to remember that. Cass says, what about compressors, though? There we go. Crank up that PSI. Okay, here we go. Back in business. That's it. USAairbrushsupply.com. Gotta turn that PSI down a little bit. Okay. Now let me look at. All right. So that would be lighting up kind of like this ridge right here. Rich says he loves his cash talent. Yeah. It's about as moron proof as I could imagine. And trust me, I have tested that theory. It was about 110. Yeah, posh is nice. I had a, a posh airbrush back in the day. Cass is looking for uh, compressor recommendations. I imagine something with like a lower pressure. No, no, it's not really that. Any any compressor that's got like an extra air tank um, is a must because you don't want to be, you can regulate the air pressure if it comes out. So you definitely need a good air tank. Um, there's hundreds of different ones out there. 
you want a good air tank, you want a water trap. I have a I have an air valve split on mine too, actually, so I could run two airbrushes off. Nice, thanks, Gil. He posted a link for Barwell Body Workshop. Why do they sell airbrush supplies? Yeah, but they're UK based because Cass is in the UK. Oh, cool. This is a very fine line here because I'm trying to not um, blow out anything. I'm trying to do very subtle airbrushing. So I'm keeping the PSI low, but then I got to make sure that the paint is the right, you know, thickness to go through it all. sword. Alan says, hello, how are you both today? Hi, Alan. We, uh, we're excellent. We're just getting ready for our big Memorial Day sale, and this will be our first uh, cookout for a, a holiday where we've officially gone vegan. <laughs> yeah. So, so that'll be interesting. I'm, I'm so if you guys out. have any good vegan jokes, let us know. Yeah. I've been making a couple good vegan jokes myself. But I'm always up for new ones. I'm also Polish too, so if you got any good Polish jokes, I'll take them as well. that comedian that we were watching that hates vegans? Daniel Sloss. Oh, he was funny. See, this is already, I already kind of over blew the glow on the inside of the face here, so I might have to dial that back a bit. Um, but I can, I can work on that a little later. Rich wants to know what size needle head are you using right now? The fine. And... It's Cass says, looking at Badger sets, and they state they're for light use, not constant use. I don't know what that would even entail. I assume, like, if you're just airbrushing minis, that's light use. I don't know. I think maybe they mean, like, they're not meant for, like, if you're in an auto body shop where you're using, like, heavy enamels through it every day. I have used Badger products for airbrushing all my miniatures um, for years now. And I've used Posh and I've used Iwata. They all work just fine when you're, you know, working on miniature stuff. Cass goes, okay, that makes sense. Let's move up to the next color here. Now, here's the cool thing: because these are condiment cups, I'll be able to cap all these. Like, I'm gonna, I'm gonna cap this one right now because I am gonna have to do touch-ups after the video, most likely. And I definitely wanna make sure that I got that guy saved. In fact, uh, the the hmm? bag is right there behind that lamp. Can you grab me two more lids so I can make sure I can save these colors as well? 
Just the lids, not yep. the back. Gotcha. that ethereal green color. Love. That's a good tip. Rich says for hot environments, he learned it's best to use a little saran wrap over the condiment cup before popping the lid on and it and then store them inside. Yeah. Huh. I did not know that. We don't really have much of that problem up here because it's we we actually have to keep things from like freezing up here and stuff. Like, that's our... I mean, it can snow in April. Yeah. Which is just... Ridiculous. Ridiculous, but... It's something we have to deal with. Alan says, here's a Polish joke. What happened to the Polish National Library? What? <laughs> Someone stole the books. Oh. <laughs> Oh, that was good. It should have been someone stole the book. That would have been even better. That would have been a zinc a more of a zinger. The one singular book in the The one Polish singular library. book, yeah. I hope I don't get like a Polish Warhammer page that like hates me now because of this. Don't worry, Simon's not watching. <laughs> oh, it goes, that was lame. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I always like the, uh, you know, why did, uh, why did the Polish submarine sink? Why? Because you can't use a screen door on a submarine. <laughs> so stupid. <laughs> Cracks me up, though. See, now I got to... I'm really trying to get this PSI down. There we go. Because I don't want this to be like a blowout. So I'm like off the side of the camera manually adjusting my air pressure on this compressor every five seconds. See, that's, that's too high. I got to dial that down. That's better. That's really starting to kind of blow there. Let's get a second coat on that for evenness. All right, the next color, I'm gonna cap this. The next color is only going to be on the sword and the very highest edges of this rock because it's supposed to simulate that the light is starting to kind of fall away a little bit. tunnel.
see that? Now we're really starting to look like we've got some magical flames going on here. I need to let this sword dry for a minute because it's starting to get a lot of layers on. So I need to let it dry for a good couple minutes before I move on with the next layers because I want to make sure that it's nice and evenly covered with this bright green before I start doing any of the dry brushing where I add a little bit of yellow to it. But I don't want to, you know, let it get streaky or anything like that. See, I only sprayed just the top there and just like that tiny little edge. I didn't get anything down here because I'm trying to create like a gradation. There we go. That's enough. Don't, I'm not touching it. It's very easy to blow out the colors. Very easy. And to go too far. Yeah, it's very easy to go too far. Also, I still have to figure out what color Space Marine I want to paint this guy here. And he's going to go right on there. That's why I'm saving these green colors, because I'm still going to have to spray a little bit on the edge of his head there to look like it's glowing. But I haven't figured that out yet. I also, there's a Space Marine helmet that's dangling off of Bellacor's wing over here that I haven't painted yet either, because I was thinking about trying to figure out what chapter I want to do. Maybe I might make them like Emperor Spears or something, or I don't know. Maybe I'll make them red so that there's a nice pop of red on the whole display piece with the, you know, greenish vibe glowing off of it. I kind of like the Emperor Spear idea because then it's black and white with the purple and stuff. You know? Emperor Spears are blue. I thought those were black and white. The, the icons are, but their armor is blue. Well, that's what I mean. Like the blue and the purple, and then. Mm -hmm. have the I like Emperor Spears' icon. idea. They're a popular army right now. It'd be kind of fun to have a dead Emperor Spear down there. All right, I'm just cleaning out my airbrush while I'm letting these pieces dry real quick. I gotta switch airbrushes. This one's giving me problems right now. So now would be the time while he's switching the airbrush if you have any more Polish jokes. Yes. Bring them. Bring it. Uh, Alan is asking, how would you paint Black Legion armor to make it pop and not looking so bland? I would paint it so that the bottom of their legs and that parts of the tanks and stuff look like they're like hot magma. Ooh. I did that on an armor piece like last year, one of our live streams last year. I don't know what's going on with this airbrush. I'm going to switch to the other one. <laughs> <That's funny. laughs> I found that more funny than I probably should have Rich goes I tried to find a vegan joke <laughs> but they were all too cheesy <laughs> so stupid <laughs> oh I love it that is such a dumb joke <laughs> Alan wants to know if we have a link to that video let me root around and see if I can find it. It's it's on our Facebook page somewhere. All right, so you could see how this guy's coming together so far with the the three areas. See that? What do you think of? Nice. Rich goes, yeah, I laughed at that too much as well. <laughs> too cheesy. That's great. So dumb. <laughs> I do kind of miss cheese. We do eat cheese once in a while. We have eaten cheese maybe twice since we've gone vegan, so that's not that bad. 
but it's actually kind of jacking us up anymore, so we don't really eat cheese that much. We swapped out like pretty much everything for vegan. I would say we're 90 something percent vegan. Yeah, well, I would say we're more like flexitarian because we do cheat on occasion. Like We've eaten sushi like once. I can't give up my seafood. That's more like pescatarian. Though. Pescatarian, but we don't really eat cheese or anything like that. Yeah. So, yeah. Cheese will kill you if you eat a lot of it. It'll really, it'll get you. It'll get you. I, All right, time to do another coat of this green on the sword. I blame the veganism on watching way too many documentaries during COVID. Yeah. Totally. <laughs> hey, what's up, Bob? Bob says he just finished his post-gym cow's blood milkshake. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, for those of you that don't know, um, Bob is um, from my D&D group uh, that gets together every two weeks, and um, he just joined us to help out with doing uh, custom design, so, so that's awesome. Let's mix a little bit of yellow into this. Just to add some warmth to it. Oh God. That was too much yellow. Rich also says that's beautiful so far, by the way. Thanks, man. It's not too cheesy. You know, the lasagna, the one that I do with the spinach and stuff, mm -hmm. that's meatless, the uh, consistency of, like, the tofu ricotta actually pretty much, it's, like... Yeah, it's pretty much cheese. It, it resembles cheese. There, I just added a splash of yellow to the to the mix, just for the front of the blade, to really make that look like it's popping out there. I've really got to let this dry before I hit it with any kind of dry brushing. So, let's see how we're doing here. Well, while that's while that's doing its thing, what I can do is touch up some of the shadows in other areas of the model. I want to save this green. I can pull back out the shading color and set the pressure on my airbrush really low and just touch up some of these shadow areas a bit. Hey Mike. Mike says, uh, damn I'm late. Can you start over? Kidding. <laughs> yeah, let me go, uh, <laughs> let me go reprime this model and do that. <laughs> We've actually uh, been working on the Bellacore model for like a couple weeks now. This will be the last video for Bellacore though. I don't know what I'm gonna do next week. It might be a Gundam. It might be lighting. We should do lighting. We haven't done lighting in a while. I could do a lighting video next week. Nice and low pressure so I can work on enhancing some of the, the, the more far off areas that would get some of the glows. See light has a tricky way of bouncing off of things. With something like this wing, if you aim the airbrush like this and spray it, 
it will hit only those like shadows of the ridges. See how there's like those shadows right there in the ridges? That really simulates like a good um, approximation of the way that light would bounce off uh, the high the high areas of it. See, there it is again. So when I aim it this way, it looks like the light's actually kind of like bouncing off the areas. That's really cool. The PSI is pretty low right now, and I'm a little bit further away, so it really uh, doesn't get too blown out. First I'll have to repaint that bottom skull. What, down here? Yeah. No, he's supposed to be green. Oh. Because the light's bouncing off the skull, too. Oh, I see. Mm -hmm. He's fine. I'll stop backseat painting now. Sorry. Backseat painting. Who's backseat painting? The same with this chain. The chain could use a little bit more color. See how when you turn the base around this way, you don't see any of the light. When you turn it around this way, it looks like the light's glowing right on it. That's important for creating the effect. Same with down here. See how it's trickling on the edges, mm -hmm. but not on the undersides? That's important, too. I'm trying to think, would any of this glow hit the other wing? No. I don't think you'd see anything on the other wing at all. Rich says, laughing my ass off at backseat painting. What's your PSI set at right now? Be like 50. I, I can't see the dial. I think it's around 50. I've just kind of been playing with it, taking it up and down depending on the paint. See, I'm just bringing it in just on the chest here, just a little bit. The underside of that horn. Should be a little bit that hits the bottom of this shoulder armor. <laughs> Joe Orlebar is uh, checking in with us. Says just catching you live. Where are those condiment cuts at? Hi, everywhere, guys. everywhere. <laughs> the condiment cups are to be found everywhere. So that armor right there is going to need a blast of it, too. This armor is actually probably the closest to the sword, so it's going to need a pretty healthy, a pretty healthy dose of color hitting it. Ah, this guy's off balance. Rich says, if you're in the U.S., they're always at your local grocery store in the napkins, paper towels aisle, usually. Yeah. I just buy them off of Amazon. Yeah, you can also get them in bulk on Amazon, too. Are Jello shots considered vegan? No, because it's bone. Jello is made from horse bones. Oh, man. Yeah. Is it a terribly evil thought to, like, thinking about making, like, Jello shots for this weekend and feeding some to the, you know, beast next door? What, the dog? Yeah. <laughs> so it shuts up. <laughs> That's horrible. 
that is horrible. I shouldn't say that. No, we're not. We're not giving any dog stello shots. That's ridiculous. <laughs> Rich says, "Do it." <laughs> you have no idea. There's our we neighbor. We have this insane pit bull. Yeah, has this pit bull who is not a friendly pit bull. Yeah, I hate this damn dog, and, and I don't hate animals. I yeah, love animals. I, I'm actually kind of a little afraid of it, especially because we have like small kids and stuff too. You know. And, and it's this funny, woman like, treats it like it's a baby. It's not a baby. It's a freaking pit bull. He could, like, tear your face off. Yeah. And then she, like, wonders. She's like, how come my daughter doesn't ever drop by anymore? Yeah. Joe is like, it's the dog. <laughs> no one likes this dog. Joe Orlebar says, no, it's made from gross, uh... A bar, a bar? I don't even know what that is. And Rich says, give the dog a CBD jello shot. Yeah, right? I'll just give the dog a box of chocolates and call it a oh, night. Oh, don't do that. <laughs> it's horrible. <laughs> the one day, though, I was carrying my laptop over and I had my laptop and a coffee and I didn't realize like he was like behind the one area where there's a bush so I didn't see him and like I almost like dropped my laptop on the cement and, oh that would have been bad all right I just was softening the gradient there a little bit just the black honestly I don't know how much more I can do on the video right now because I gotta wait for this sword to dry before I hit it with the final step. Let me show you how this guy's gonna look all pulled together. Let me just clean this paint out of the airbrush real quick. My paint water is like toxic green over here. Flip this over so you can get a better, sorry, better contrast here. So this guy's going on here, and as you can see, it's nice and blending in there. He does have shoulder armor, which uh, I, I got to add in, and then the leg armor, but they're still wet, so I don't want to attach those pieces just yet. And then there's the wing. That attaches like that. So you could see how we got this glow effect going on right now when the three main pieces come together. And so far, I think that's pretty convincing. What do you I, think? I'd say so. Yeah? Mm -hmm. I think it's pretty convincing. I'm pretty happy with where that's going. Um, the last step, and it's it's a step that I probably can't show on camera because I really want to make sure that this is dry before I hit it with a dry brush, is I would take the brightest color that I have, which is this one that I mixed up. Joe says that's stunning. Thank you. I would take the brightest color that I have, which is this, this bright green that I saved in the condiment cup, and I would mix that with like a drop of white and maybe a drop of yellow depending on how I feel if I like where the color is going and I would dry brush just um, I would dry brush just like the tips of these flames right here just so that the very edges of the flames are just like a hair brighter than the rest of the sword which would really pop it out and that's what I am going to do once it's fully dry. But I, if I touched it now with a dry brush, it would it would smear everywhere and it would just kill the whole effect. So I can't do that. But that would be the very last step would just be dry brushing a little bit of a lighter version of this green color. And that would be it. And then I'd be able to tie the whole thing together. I still have to paint this loincloth piece and some of the face details. Um... And, of course, the dead soldier guy, the dead marine guy. Joe goes, wild pot makes an appearance. I said, yes, we love us some condiment cups. Mm -hmm. Oh, there's, they're everywhere. See, this is the, 
that's the gradation of the OSL right here, these three colors. And I had condiment cups for like the flesh tone that was underneath the wings. The paint in these is still good from weeks ago. So when you're doing like a object source lighting effect, uh, you always want to do like three variants of colors or? Yes, yeah. three. The shadow, the main color, which would be whatever the main green, you know, if you're doing this with red, you'd want this to be red, dark red, bright red. If you're doing this with blue, you'd want this to be bright blue, dark blue, light blue. You know, it's just, you're always going with the variant of it. And then the final trick would be the highlight, which I can't show because it's all, uh, you know, wet still. Mike says, how do you feel about hair dryer to dry the paint? Someone mentioned it elsewhere and I was horrified. Yes. <laughs> um, I don't ever do that because hair dryers, well, one, can get really hot. And if they get really hot, it could kind of like start warping some small pieces, like maybe some of these flame pieces could start getting warped. Number two, if paint is really thick and you hit it with a hair dryer, it could dry out so fast that it creates like weird cracks in the paint. And then that creates like a real funky texture that looks horrible. Um, also, there's nothing wrong with just being patient. Just chill. Just chill. It'll dry. You know, it just might take like 10, 15 minutes longer, you know, but it'll dry eventually. So you don't need to be like blow drying it and then potentially melt your model by accident or have a sword sagging or, you know, have a flaccid spear on a character. You don't want that. <laughs> no one ever wants no a one, No one spear. ever wants a flaccid spear on a character. So, yeah, I don't, I don't use blow dryers. He said, phew, I thought I was just too old school. No. No. We well, I'm old, I'm old school, too. But, I mean, some of these kids these days are just impatient with painting. It's like, chill out. These young the first snappers it's not a competition you're just painting because you're well i mean yeah if you're a competitive painting yeah maybe i don't know but i mean I, i'm not competitive painting i'm painting just for the hell of it because it's fun <laughs> great minds think alike rich says you never want a flaccid spear damn it i was a second too late <laughs> rich is right up there with the jokes today <laughs> <laughs> I do want, actually, since everyone's on the camera before I sign off, I do want a question. I'm going to ask everyone a question. What color armor do you think I should paint this space marine? Oh, I, no. Joe says flaccid spear. I think that's why my first wife left me. Sad. Oh, sad. 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 Way to bring it down. <laughs> so, guys, what color do you think I should paint this space marine? I was initially thinking emperor spears that's still kind of like the number one that's in the lead because they're a newer army they're kind of popular and they're blue but um if you guys have any suggestions you know throw them in the comments because i'm open to it i'm kind of at a little bit of a creative impasse here because i can't figure out what color to paint this guy that would go along nicely with the uh you know, purple wings and the and the green glowing, you know, because I kind of want to have it all, you know, be a nice piece. Uh, Gil says black and red. Black and red? Mm hmm Could be a cool combination. Maybe like um, flesh terrors. Like the flesh terror scheme. Yeah. Could look pretty neat. Mm hmm What were those guys you were painting that were black and what? They were wolves of the... Of the Emperor or something like that? No, um, I forget what chapter that was. It was a Space Wolf spin -off. It was a Space Wolves, yeah. 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 Black might actually be kind of nice here because it would be, uh, it would be really dark and contrast well off the, um, uh, um, the base, the gray of the base here. Because there's also going to be a little bit of glowing from the blue flame right here. So maybe Emperor Spears might not be the way to go because it would blend too much. Uh, with Rich blow. says he's kind of agreeing with Gil. Gil says, yep. Like charcoals and deep red accents. Uh-huh. That would contrast really well off the green glowing flame stuff. 
And Joe goes, is it Chaos Marine Corps? No, it's a regular Marine. But there's plenty of dark red um, Marine guys. He's in Primaris armor, so he's definitely regular Marine, not Chaos. That might be a way to go. Painting that guy like that. Or Joe says, Hounds of Horse. I don't know. I gotta look that up. I don't know what Horus really means. Uh, Gil says it would also contrast well over the stonework. Yeah. 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 I'm with you on that one. I'm feeling that. All right, guys. Well, I'm going to wrap the video up here. Uh, this is kind of like where I'm just going to let this model chill for a little bit before I finish the details. I do want to get this guy done up really soon because he'd be a nice display piece. And we'll post final pictures in the customer creations group. So if you're not part of Facebook group, you should definitely join it. Cool. Well, thanks everyone for watching. And I hope you guys, uh, you know, picked up some good tips on OSL lighting. And next week we will probably do regular lighting. I'm thinking about, I have a um, crazy uh, RG Gundam Jiong, which has a ton of engines. It has butt rockets. It has engines coming out of where its butt would be. And I'm thinking about putting lights on it. That, that sounds appropriate. Uh, let's see. Joe goes, those wings, slap space, they're amazing. Yeah, they, they turned out really good, baby. Thank you. I, uh, the back side is where you really get to see some of the chaos iconography. So I was pretty happy with how that turned off. Like some chaos scarification burnt into the wings. All right. Well, thanks everyone for watching and we'll see you next week when we do some, some LED lighting and uh, have a good one. Have a wonderful Memorial Day and eat some meat for us. Mm-hmm.